What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Naisha Stone, and we're back with Carving the Stone Podcast, where our positive news articles come to life. You know, every Tuesday, I bring someone new on so we can talk about the positive things going on in their life. And this Tuesday is no different. And I'm really excited for our guest today because um, if many of you didn't know, I moved to Georgia almost a year ago, I'm originally from Wisconsin. And when I came into town early on, I reached out to the Atlanta Association of Black Journalists, which is a chapter of National Association of Black Journalists. And after a few months, I was finally able to get connected to the president, uh, Craig Brown, who is our next guest. And so I'm excited to bring him on because him and the whole organization have been showing me so much love. So it only makes sense to show them love back. So what up, Craig? How are you doing, Aisha? <laughs> hey, what's up? How you doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm excited to have you on. I've been wanting to like interview other journalists for a long time. I never get the opportunity to really do that. Um, so a little nervous, but very excited. Um, so I kind of just want to just start off with how uh, how did you get connected with the Atlanta Association of Black Journalists and kind of what does it mean to be the president of the of the organization? OK, um, so so my story is uh, is is, is kind of complex. I uh... Um, originally, uh, I was a military person. I served in the United States Army. Uh, I did that for about 22 years, uh, and I retired in 2014. Uh, 2014, I was 39 years old. Uh, so, you know, I'm retired, but I'm still a, a very young man, you know, in my mind. And I was like, I felt like I was still, you know, it was still early enough in life for me to pursue a second career. Um, so I started thinking about, you know, what it is that I was passionate about. You know, uh, being in the military was very difficult. It was very hard. Um, you know, I, I lost uh, uh, brothers and sisters in arms or whatever. So I felt like my next career needed to be something that I loved doing, um, something that I was passionate about, something that I truly enjoyed and something that was nowhere near as stressful as being in the military. So I thought, you know, long about it. Um, and I, I came to the conclusion that I love sports. Uh, I felt like I, I write pretty well. So for me, writing about sports seemed to be the thing to do. Uh, so I um, I enrolled at Clark Atlanta University. Um, and once I did, I went and I spoke to uh, an advisor and I told her about, you know, what my plan was. Um, so she she pretty much confirmed, you know, being a journalist is probably um, what I what I what I should do um, based on interest or whatever that I expressed to her. Uh, so after doing that, I, I figured like the next in the military, there are professional development organizations. So I figured there had to be something for journalism, being that I didn't know a lot about the craft. Um, so I just I think I Googled it. Uh, I think I googled uh, journalists, young journalists, something like that or whatever. And one of the first, um, one of the first things that came up was um, the Atlanta Association for Black Journalists. Um, so I was intrigued. Uh, went to the websites, um, found out a lot about a, a lot of great information. Found out what it is they do, why they were founded, and all that stuff was important and it resonated. Uh, and I said, yeah, this is definitely, uh, definitely the thing for me. I found out was I did my research. I found out that it was basically a uh an organization of of black journalists and they were they were empowered um in the uh mid 70s uh, because it had to be it was a tumultuous time um in the deep south in the 70s so they got together pretty much as a means of support for other journalists right um so i loved it and i thought about it man it was like so much of what we you know what we experienced in the 60s and 70s is given to us from the lens of of white people or people who didn't necessarily care about who we were as a as a people so I, I thought that the, um, the the mission was super important, right? It's like we were we had an opportunity to hear our story by people we know who we trusted and we know who loved us. Um, so being the president of the organization means so much, particularly in Atlanta, because Atlanta was a hotbed um, during the uh, the late '60s and early '70s uh, in, in terms of uh, racial tension, freedom, uh, just all the different things that were going on at that time. Um, so this organization was built to confront that. So being elected president was was naturally it was humbling. Um, I'm humbled every day um, to to be um, the the choice of the people to to lead this great organization. I'm um, just extremely proud. Um. So since you've been the president, how what what changes or how where do you see the organization going? So what is the organization currently doing um, for Black journalists, and then where do you want the organization to go? Oh man! Um, since being a, so I've been the president for about a year, and um, we we've made you know we've we've made some progress. Uh, basically, the 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 purpose of the chapter has not changed. We're still here to promote and support uh, black journalism. 
Um, so when I first joined as a student um, in 20, when was that? I think it's 2016, 2016, I joined as a, as a student. Um, and the opportunities for the most part were, you know, you, we had the opportunity to uh, connect with, uh, with, with other journalists, with more seasoned journalists to be involved in professional development sessions. So we would work, we would go and do like writing workshops, um, photography workshops, um, the history of journalism, things of that nature, things that kind of sharpen our, our, our tools as, as journalists. So COVID pretty much shut all that down. Um, everything we were, we were relegated to just doing Zoom meetings. Um, and, you know, during COVID, like I said, it was a very rough time. So the workshops, the panels, all that stuff for the most part went away. Um, so as the president, I was able to bring that back. I think our first two meetings were done via Zoom. Um, but in March, we had our first um, our first in-person meeting for a long time. Um, and it just felt amazing. I think it was about maybe about 30 people there, but it just felt good to be back uh, in that space in person to be able to, you know, look in the eyes and give a handshake or give a hug to these people who normally serve as great mentors. Uh, so that was that was fantastic. So just to be back or whatever was a significant accomplishment. And then we start picking up and doing the things that we've done in the past. We love, I love particularly because I joined ABJ as a student. So I love taking care of other students. That was the main reason why I joined ABJ and ran as president. Um, so we got to do that. So uh, NABJ um, each year has a national convention and the location mm -hmm. changes each year. Um, this year it was in, in 2022, it was in Las Vegas. Uh, so what I did, I had an opportunity to send um, four aspiring uh, aspiring student journalists to Las Vegas. Um, so they didn't have to pay anything. Uh, they didn't have to pay the registration. They didn't have to pay for their flight or hotel, any of that. We sent them just based on the idea that we're taking care of our own. We're, we're helping to, to, to form and mentor these great students. So to be able to send them to that um, was amazing. We I had, uh, so, I mean, several, so many events uh, in the last year. We honored the NABJ president, uh, Madam Dorothy Tucker, who has been a, a journalist for 40 years. So we were able to have an event where we celebrated that landmark. Um, yeah, we've, we've just, we've met every month uh, and normally what we try to do um, each month that we meet, we, you know, we'll meet, we'll do our professional development workshop, we'll network amongst ourselves. And then we normally try to do something with the committee. Um, the last year was it was kind of difficult because we were way behind schedule. So, you know, it's like we missed out on the opportunities to do that sometimes. Uh, but we did when we did get the opportunity to do it, it felt great. It felt amazing. Um, we started out this year great. We just had our first meeting of the year uh, on, on Saturday. And we had a great gentleman, Clint Deloach, who uh, has been a journalist for, um, he did, I think he did 22 and a half years at CNN. Um, then he went on to do two and a half years in China and three and a half years in Turkey. So he had, had a lot to talk about, not only, you know, being professional um, and, and doing well in your own country, but going overseas or whatever and continuing to be, uh, to make strides in journalism there. Um, so that was that was super important. We have a Black History Month program coming up in February. We have six prominent journalists. Um, the the guy who put it down, who who organized it, is a um, he's a founder, original founder, Stan the Godfather Washington. Um, so he put the event together. He won't tell me who. So I'm the president. I don't <laughs> even know who's coming. But I, I'm 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 happy that he's he's excited about it. And if he's excited about it, and he's been in journalism for fifty years. And he's bringing six prominent Atlanta journalists. And he's like, Craig, it's going to blow your mind when you see him. Um, so so those are the kind of events that we're having. And, and that, again, it's like when we're able to do that, when we're able to connect with our past, when we're able to you know, make strides on making our journalism, our, our journalists uh, better and more apt at their jobs. You know what I'm saying? It's just a, a, it's an amazing feeling. I think it's amazing. I love the organization. Like I said, um, it's been almost a year. Um, and... I really look forward to the meetings, even though they once a month. So I don't have many friends in Georgia. I don't know too many people, but I was able to actually network. And then Natalie, who I met at ABJ, we spent together some time like for New Year's. Uh, we went together, hang out some different spots. And just the overall organization has been very welcoming to me. And that's been something new for me because I've been in journalism since I started college what, in 2018. So like 2019 is like when I really got involved. Or, right. No. Am I too far? No, 2016. Yeah, 2016 or 2014. I don't know. Whatever. But it's been some years and a few still new. 
but I really just started releasing, like, getting involved with other journalists and other media. Um, just coming from where I come from, it's, sometimes it's hard to connect um, within your own field, but going into Georgia and meeting with, you know, the Atlanta Association of Black Journalists, like, y'all were just like, hey, what's up? We like what you're doing. Come on over here. Let's figure out how we can work together. This is what we're doing. If you if you fit in, if you however you want to fit in, you know, we're we're willing to work with you. So I definitely appreciate that as a young black journalist because we need other people to look up to. We need other resources. And so um y'all are definitely needed and y'all doing your thing. And I'm happy to to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, a, a couple of things to say to that. Number one, it's family. And I didn't mention this before, but one of the things that I, I consider really important is that sense of family that you have when you come around and you're around ABJ or around NABJ. It should be like that because, again, it's very difficult. And even in this day and age to be an African-American journalist, not everybody wants to hear your side of the story. They don't want to hear your perspective some of the times. Sometimes the pay isn't right. For black women, a, a lot of times uh, the pay isn't right. Um, so it's like we not only serve as a sense of, of of support, professional support or whatever, but personal support as well. And it could be that when you are dealing with something this high profile, this um, this important, right? There can there can be some 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 kickback, right? And and I think we've seen that. I just um, saw an article in the Wall Street Journal about a young brother that was in um, he's with the Wall Street Journal and he was in Arizona. And he was, uh, I guess he was at a bank and he was trying to interview individuals that were coming out of the bank. That's all. He's just trying to do his job, but he wanted to be in handcuffed and arrested. And that is not wow. something that doesn't happen. That, I mean, it happens more frequently than people understand. So, it, you know what I'm saying? It's very important to have that support, right? When you're dealing with things, when you're, when the, when the workload is is not fair, when it seems like maybe your white colleagues are getting paid a little more or doing a little better, right? Having a place where you can come and kind of diffuse, just be yourself and know that you're surrounded by love and support. Um, it, it makes it all the worthwhile. So I'm glad that you saw that in us. And um, I want to stop and take a second and talk about you uh, because I, I got a little emotional speaking about you on Saturday. Um, so for those who don't know, Carving the Stone just hit its sixth anniversary. What's amazing about that is that this is a, a young black single female doing it on her own and doing it big. She was just featured in Essence Magazine, which is huge. I haven't been featured in Essence Magazine yet, <laughs> right? So anytime you're getting you're, you're getting that kind of 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 of, of of credit, right? It means it attests to what you're doing. It attests to your drive and your level of professionalism and you being unafraid and going out there and making it happen for yourself. Like nobody had to, you know, ask you to, to, to go out there and, and 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 choose this platform of only positive stories. Like you did that, you did that on your own. If people see that example, instead of us waiting for, you know, some, some person to put money in our pocket to go, we'll go out there and cover our own events. We'll go out there and talk about the, you know, we ain't have to wait on anybody else. And that's what I absolutely, absolutely loved about Carved in Stone. So again, you weren't at the meeting. That's pretty much what I said at the meeting. So I just want to put that out there again. I'm super proud. ABJ is super proud and, and we're glad you're a part of us now. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a long road, but I, it's, it's been like people like you and organizations like AABJ that has helped me randomly. Like I was just like, I just moved to Georgia. I really didn't have a plan. No clients in Georgia, everything is kind of based in Wisconsin. So for me it's like, let me just reach out and for y'all to reach back out and be like, no, come on. Like you're welcome. Like I, that's what I do what I do because I know there are positive people out there I know there are people that who really care about others and so it's my job you know I feel like it's my passion my service to promote people like you and the work that you do so switching a little bit from AABJ I want to talk about your professional career so I know you served in the in the army right for uh 22 right. years so going mm -hmm. out of that you went to Clark Atlanta and then now you know you're in media so can you talk about what was like the first job you took once you graduated college and kind of like just where are, where are you now in your career and what kind of what are some things you've learned about the world of media? Okay. Um, after uh, after my time in Clark Atlanta, I decided, you know, I want I didn't ever want to be in a position where I was having having a struggle to take care of my family. Uh, and it felt like sometimes, you know, having a bachelor's might not be enough. Um, so I said to myself, you know what, let me go and and, and get my master's degree. Um, I'd always been a big fan of the University of Miami and the opportunity presented itself to go and attend there. Uh, so I did that. My I'm a sports journalist by trade. So I uh, majored in sports administration. So I figured I have the journalism background and that sports administration background or whatever. I put those together and it would be difficult to uh, to, to to beat that, to top that. So 
Um, so that's what I did. So I graduated with uh, with my master's in sports administration from the U um, in December <laughs> of 2021. Uh, so right after that happened, I was um, I was hired by the Atlanta Voice. Um, the Atlanta Voice is uh, a black newspaper, the largest black newspaper uh, in the city of Atlanta. And anybody who knows about the history of black newspapers, they are um, ultra important. Again, when we had um, no way to really communicate our stories, black newspapers did that, um, and 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 it resulted in so much. You know, um, we, we don't we don't get um, freedom from slavery without black newspapers. We don't get um, voting rights without black newspapers. Um, Jim. Um, Jim Crow doesn't go away without the empowerment uh, provided by black newspapers. So they're ultra important. So I have a black newspaper come to me um, and, and tell me that they're what uh, I'm looking for um, at the highest level. So I was their senior editor uh, when I was hired uh, and that just really meant a lot. Uh, I got to give a shout out to Miss Janice Ware, who I absolutely love uh, to death. Another strong black woman. She owns the Atlanta Voice and other businesses. So I want to shout her out right quick. But yeah, she gave me an opportunity. She's like, hey, come in. We're going to give you our highest um editor position um and it was it was a great position i um the thing that kind of i was there for about four months and the thing that kind of um pulled me in a different direction is we lost all of our journalists we lost all of our journal i would be in the newsroom by myself so everybody got great paying jobs to go other places and miss Ware would be like you know they, they're doing that on purpose you know it's like they don't want this this african-american publication to thrive so they'll come in or whatever and they'll poach all our talent. Um, so I, I looked up and I had when I think when I got there, I had um four people regularly working in the newsroom. Um, and by the time I think a time, I think around by the time September rolled around, it was me by myself writing stories, taking photos, assigning myself stories because I had no um <laughs> I didn't have that many writers under me. So assigning myself stories, going out covering those photo, those stories coming back and writing articles or whatever. It was just, it was just too much. I was spending too much time away from home. The stress was crazy. I, I just needed to do something different. So I talked to Ms. Ware, she understood. Um, so I made a change. Uh, and again, like I say, you know, uh, HBCUs and, um, and, and black students are just a passion of mine. So there's an individual, Ron Thomas, who's been a, he's been a journalist for 40 years, uh, African-American journalist for 40 years. He gave me the opportunity to interview for a position at Morehouse College. Um, again, man, Morehouse is one of those, it's, it's one of the most significant HBCUs out there, period. Shout out and love to all HBCUs, um, but Morehouse is, is definitely different. And I'm not talking about just the education of Dr. Martin Luther King. I'm talking about so many great individuals who have come through those doors. So the opportunity to work there, um, I, I had to jump at it. Um, and I, I absolutely love it. I've been there for about four months now. Um, and, and again, it's just 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 being there, being among um, greatness, being among those individuals that are transforming into great individuals is, is just, um, you, you can't ask uh, for a better job than that. Uh, it's truly rewarding. The, the individual that inspired me most to attend an HBCU was Spike Lee. Mm. Uh, and it's a big Spike Lee fan, a uh, big Spike Lee fan. A shout out to Spike. And he and um, one of my most revered journalists, a young man by the name of Ralph Wiley, came to the conclusion that there weren't enough black journalists um, covering, you know, covering us, telling our stories. Uh, Ralph Wiley said he would go to, uh, to he would go to baseball games and he would be the only black person in the press box. And that was the norm. And he and Spike Lee spoke and said, you know, the reason why this is happening, we're not creating our own. We're not breeding our own journalists. So we have to do a better job than that. So the two of them got together and decided to come up with a, a plan to create more black journalists. And they created the journalism department in Morehouse. Um, initially, when it started, it was a minor under the English department, um, but under Ron Thomas's leadership, it is now a major, and uh, it is doing well. We normally have students from Spelman come over, CAU come over, um, just to uh, be a part of the program. Uh, we have some 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 great individuals that are Morehouse graduates out there now doing big things. Um, yeah, so it's it's amazing. So to be a part of that again, and, and to be one of the individuals responsible for helping. To, to create these young black minds that go out in journalism and do big things. And it's just, it's just, it's just an honor. Um, I, I don't know what the, I don't know what the career holds, um, what my career holds for me. I don't know what my next steps are. I'm enjoying myself at Morehouse right now that the plan is not to go anywhere, just continue to to better myself and uh, continue to continue to produce great students. And uh, I don't know, I still feel like I'm, I just turned 50. 
Um, but I still feel like I'm young enough to, you know, do whatever it is um, that I want to be doing. I'm passionate about Morehouse. I'm passionate about ABJ. So right now that's where I'm at. Oh, they say it's in the mind. So however you feel in your mind, um, they say that's like, that's what keeps you young. So my granny, she, she older and she, she like the youngest person I know. So like, I don't think age like kind of really matter. Um, bring me into one of the classes. I want to speak. I want to speak to the students. Uh, <laughs> any, any, any time. I, I mean, absolutely. I, I definitely, you know what? I definitely think they need to hear your story because, you know, being an entrepreneur is definitely, that's an amazing option, right? So you don't have to necessarily worry about, you know, worry about being with CNN or, or ESPN or what have you, you know, you can create your own craft. So, uh, bringing you in and letting them know that and letting them see, the, the results of your hard work and energy. Yeah, that's something we can definitely do. I'm gonna hold you to that. No, I'm gonna hold you to it. Uh, I wanted to go to HBCU. I just couldn't afford it. Um, but it worked out for me. But like, I definitely want other black students to get that experience because I always like look back and hear about other people's experiences. And I'm like, I went to class and that was literally it. It was nothing more. So um, a big you uh you brought up just like teaching other journalists and that's a big part of Carbon Stone. Um, as we expand, it's been my goal to like bring up the next generation of brown, uh, black and brown journalists. So like anything I could do to support that, which is why like I'm on I go to Atlanta Association of Black Journalists or I'm on the board of the Milwaukee Press Club to make sure that we're getting those that funding and those resources and those opportunities because like you said we don't get we don't get, always get the opportunity to always um, tell our own stories. So we definitely right. need that. We need, we definitely need that platform. Um, where yeah. do you want to see journalism go? So like where, where is that right now? Cause you, you know, a lot of us are kind of going away from traditional media. Um, we don't really read newspapers like that. We don't really watch broadcast TV. And I'm talking about like, you know, me as a millennial, um, or however they classify me, but like, how, what do you, what do you hope to see journalism go? I I want to um I, I want to clear up um our, our interaction with social media. Uh that's that's probably the biggest thing. There is um some stuff on social media that we can use. Um unfortunately, I feel like the bulk of social media is stuff that you know doesn't doesn't empower us, that that we don't need, that we need to stay away from. Um, so you know, if if we're in, in journalism circles or whatever, if we're being intelligent about the use of social media, I think that means a lot, and that can definitely be um, that can definitely be fixed because a lot of times, um, <laughs> a lot of times I'll have um, you know interns, uh, students go out and they think that based on what they saw on social media, what they're doing is is journalism. So they'll go out and you know they'll um, um, I, it's, it's crazy. I, I remember one time. I can't say that she's gonna watch this. Um, I had a I had a student, no, I had an intern who went to she went to cover an event. And um instead of finding that finding it like talking to the individuals who threw the event, I think it was a I think it was a hair show. So instead of talking to the individuals who threw the event, um, the individuals who put the event together, how the event empowered the people who went. Instead of doing that, she went and she was like, hey, you know what? It's your girl. We in the building. We checking to see what people got in their bags. So she would go up to random people and be like, hey, girl, what you got in your bag? And the person would pull it out, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Earrings, moisturizer, whatever. Oh, girl, you got that moisturizer. And you know what I'm saying? It's just, it was it was funny. It, it was fun. Um, and I understand and I respect all that. But um, we good? Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, so, um, so I mean, it, it was funny. Um, you know, when, when she did it or whatever, but at the same time, that was a great opportunity. You know, it's like you have all these black entrepreneurs, all these black hair care entrepreneurs in one spot, you know, find out how they got to where they are, find out what their work day is like, find out how other people who are interested in that craft can do the same thing. You know, I, I felt that that's what journalism is, right? Telling the stories, right? Not just, um, you know, You're showing your face. Yeah. I, I think, I think honestly, a big part of what's going on with media is like you say, a lot of people think they're journalists now because you can just pick up a camera. You can just use your phone as a microphone. You can just go buy your microphone. Like, you know, this one off of Amazon. Um, but they're just like how there's building a house. They're fundamentals to every single thing that you do. And I think that we, as journalists that are actually you know professionals need to start doing a better job of somehow connecting to the new generation and even myself as well on you know just journalism etiquette like at least know the etiquette when you go to a place like you said if you're going to go cover an event you should at least want to interview at least one of the people that put it together it is okay to give the community because you want the community's voice as well um, but you're not just somebody off the street you are a journalist and you are representing 
some organization, some type of news. And I just don't think, I just think like with the new way of things that we're a little bit more open, but I feel like sometimes we kind of forget the values of what media and journalism is. And I just think that we just need to be honest and talk about it a little bit more. Like, no, you don't have to be like a stiff, and have, you know, and just like be, you know, shoulder stiff and stuff like that. Right. But you do need to do your research. There are so many people I've done. Inter- I literally will not do interviews with other journalists sometimes because they'll ask me, so what year was Carving Stone created? If we're now in our six year anniversary, I'm more than positive you could Google it. I'm more than positive you can go to our website and it has it on our website. Like there, there, there are little, little tiny things that like Oprah wouldn't be dealing with this. And I see myself as a, as a professional at that level. So like, I think we just need to hold ourselves more accountable because there is a lot of BS out there. And so real journalism, we need to have to show like, Hey, no, this is it. We do our research. We watch the interviews. We read the articles. If you're interviewing somebody that wrote a book, Hey, maybe you should read a little bit of the book. If you're interviewing somebody that has a new song, maybe you should listen to the song before you bring this person on your podcast. Um, so with you being a mentor, with you being a teacher, having experience like in army 22 years, um, how do you use your, uh, your, your experience and your knowledge to, um, when it comes to just mentoring other, other journalists or uh, you know, just other people in the field? Yeah. Talking about, I think the first thing is, is just establishing a professional relationship, right? Um, un- understanding, you know, being professional is the key to everything that you do. And if you do that, right, you'll always have, um, you'll, you'll always have opportunities to continue to work because people will respect the effort that you put in and they'll want to see more of that. So I think uh, the first thing I do in any situation, right, listen, you're, this is not a class for students. Uh, put the mind state, get a professionalism mind state now. Everything you're doing or whatever, it's just another step or whatever and get you to where you want to be, all right? So, you know, throw, throw that student stuff, throw that student mind state out of the, out of, throw that out of there, right? Be a professional, you know what I'm saying? Establish yourself as a professional now and everything you do, or whatever, just build upon that. So doing that, trying to, um, to, to show respect um, and at the same time, you know, um, you know what I'm saying? Be firm and, and let them know, hey, listen, if you do this the right way, meaning, and, and I, when I say the right way, I don't necessarily mean, again, like you were talking about being all stiff and, and, and you know what I'm saying? You don't necessarily have to do that. You could be fun, but at the same time, have done your research. You can have fun, but at the same time, you dress in an appropriate manner. Um, you know what I'm saying? Make sure, you know, saying it, it looks professional, you know, you know what I'm saying? They know uh, cleavage ain't the pants ain't too tight, yeah. the jeans ain't too tight, you know what I'm saying? Just creating a professional image. So all of that um, all of that is important. Um, and providing that, that, that sense of confidence, listen, you, you can do this. You are no different. You are no less than anybody who's went out and has just killed the game from a journalism standpoint. So establishing that this is the ability, whatever you want to do creatively, you can make that happen in this field. As long as, again, as you're disciplined and professional. Um, so doing that is important. Um, having a clear idea and being respectful of what it is that they want to do. Because sometimes their dreams are their dreams, right? They have to protect it. You have to respect it, right? So even if you don't necessarily agree with it, if somebody says, yeah, you know, I want to go out and I want to work for the Weather Channel, shout out to Byron Allen. Um, So if somebody says they want to be a meteorologist, respect that decision, right? And do what you can to help them fulfill their dreams. That's what your job is. Your job is not to to pick and choose. I've had people tell me when I was in college, oh, you don't want to do that. They ain't gonna make no money being no journalist. Yep. And and for me, you know what I'm saying? For for me, it's it's not about money, right? You know, again, man, journalists have an amazing tradition. If you don't know who Ida B. Wells is, you are tripping, right? There is a uh there's a legacy, right, attached to journalism, specifically African American journalism, man. It is bigger uh and more elaborate than you would ever understand. Okay. And based on that, I want to go out and make my mark that way. You know what I'm saying? Having, you know, having money is is cool, but that can't drive me. You know what I'm saying? I have to do the right thing. Eventually I'm gonna have to stand before God, right? And did you live in your purpose? He's gonna ask me that. If I be like, no, but I got this money, that might not necessarily be the answer that he's looking for. Right. So um just being really respectful of what it is that they want to do, man, and just supporting that, uh supporting that fully. No, I totally agree. I was just watching um this documentary. It's one of my favorite documentaries um about the black press. I think it's like the black press without like soldiers without swords or something like that. And it talks about Ida B. Wells and just like how we how we were a part of the the black people from uh, the migration moving up north and like how we, you know, told that story and stuff like that. Um, I think we just need to be more open of how important the media is and then more specifically black journalists, because even in a documentary, it said until black press came around, 
we weren't even our none of our tours would be none of our stories were being told there were no teachers there were no successes there were no downfalls we just didn't exist in history yeah. and I think we just need to be more open and more accessible when we talk about it because I think as journalists we're just always behind the camera or behind the article and we need to have more things like this where we say hey this is actually what we do and this why is important so uh, how we end all how I end all my interviews when people listen to this um to this interview what do you want them to get from me oh man uh how much time do I have <laughs> um, we got about like five minutes <laughs> five minutes um I, more than anything um su support black journalism right uh support it a again man uh slavery goes away um um voting goes away Jim Crow goes away segregation goes away all, all this stuff happens. So much of that is influenced by the way that black journalism talks about what's going on. Um, so so just re respect just the, the legacy of it. Right. And understand it. I mean, it's still going on now. There's still stories again that there, there's still the um, um, the the news agencies out there or whatever that want to, um, you know, say create stories or whatever that don't necessarily accurately tell the story of what we're dealing with uh, in this country. Right. So we have to be the voices when when other agencies don't want to be those voices so um yeah so just support um uh, support black journalism support black journalists right uh be involved um if there's a black newspaper in your town uh when you can you know send pick it up um peruse it find out what's going on in your community um uh, and again man just continue to support um NABJ is 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 something NABJ is something special um again NABJ um, 44 black journalists got together in Washington, D.C. and said, hey, listen, we're not being treated fairly. Um, we have to work to support ourselves, to promote ourselves. We're going to create this nationwide organization or whatever. And we're going to establish chapters across this country and we're going to breed black journalists in every corner of this country. and We're going to get it popping. Um, and, and that's exactly what they did. And, you know, there was, you know, there, people, you know, what I'm saying made threats. People lost their jobs. Uh, as a result of becoming a part of NABJ or whatever, but they recognize the more important thing or whatever is establishing NAB, establishing NABJ, establishing Black journalism in this country. Um, so it's so it's so so I mean it's so significant. So shout out to NABJ, um, support NABJ, support your your local chapters if they're having events, if they're having that 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 barbecue or that Black History program, or um, if they if they come and talk about sponsorship, you know, so just. I'm not telling you how to spend your money, but just lend it here because it's worth it. the work that these brothers and sisters have put in or whatever. It's so it's so very important and it's so worth it, man. So if I could encourage anything, definitely go out there, support your black journalists. If you have, you know, um, anybody that's interested in, in, in journalism, you know, what I'm saying support that. Don't, don't, you ain't going to make no money. Um, so support that man because you know what I'm saying more important than making money is making a difference. And, and one of the key ways to do that is is, is being a great journalist. And you can't make money in the field, just so you know. There is oh, a yes. lot of there is a lot of money in the field. Um, but it's the Carbon and Stone podcast. I'm your host, Naisha Stone, and we have Craig Brown, who is the president of um Atlanta Association of Black Journalists. Like you heard him say, please support black journalists and black owned media. Um, if we aren't telling our own stories, then no one else will, or they're gonna tell it in they're not going to tell it in the right way or it's going to be screwed, you know. So either way, figure out how to support us, whether it is um, sharing our articles, um, sharing our, our video interviews, listening to our podcast, actually donating because sometimes we do need funding or just giving us your time. However that may be, but just think about it. The Atlanta, uh, Atlanta Association of Black Journalists, National Association of Black Journalists, Wisconsin Black Media Association, Carved in Stone, uh, Copyright Magazine. There are a lot of black owned media um, just in the United States, but uh, worldwide. So just do some research and remember in the end, everything will be carved in stone and we'll be, we'll be back every Tuesday interviewing different people about positive things in their life.